Hi again then guys and welcome to another breakdown of an individual car in particular from of course the latest 1.23 update on GT Sport and this is one which I touched on briefly in my overview review of that pack when I said that it was quite possibly my favourite vehicle of them all and I think the reason for that and the reason why I was both so impressed but also so surprised are kind of the same reason rolled together and that is this car as popular as it is especially in its Gran Turismo 4 form the original spec 2 but even as popular as that was it doesn't have the same kind of fan expectations attached to it as a formula car or a Lamar prototype will have, at least not for most players. Those are more exciting prospects for coming to the game. Either in the case of the Mazda coming back, or in the case of the Formula car making its debut, both of those are literally top of the tree. They're the ultimate calibre of motorsport, and the only one that's missing in effect from that kind of calibre is Pike's Peak for the moment. And of course that could well come to the game as well, in the form of a couple of maybe iconic ones like the Escudo coming back, or maybe even newer ones like the Volkswagen. I wouldn't be surprised if they brought that to the game. Now, in the case of this one on the other hand, it's got a fan following, for sure. It was the hero car of Gran Turismo 4, not surprising at all, given that the Ford GT is, of course, Kaz himself's favourite car. So, of course, he's going to treat it well. He would be looking for the opportunity to bring it back. But for me, the LM race cars were never really as go-to options as the road car, because the road car's fantastic. It's well-priced, it's extremely fast, just in general, but especially when compared to its power, and when compared to other supercars, and that goes for real life as well, you're paying essentially Ferrari money for something that can perform as well as a Carrera GT. That's great value. In the game though, be it GT4, 5, 6, whatever the case may be, as many of you already know, I prefer the underdog. I prefer the oddball choice, so I would often go for something like a Lister Storm instead, or a... Uh, Mazda RX-8 LM race car, that kind of option instead of this one. Because although the Fords are very strong choices, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm always going to use them. If you want to just win, then sure, but often I'll want to win in something that's not as expected or not as popular. Now the Ford is popular for a reason. It's great. It's a really good all-rounder in road form, in race form, even in its concept form. It's a really good car. Now this one was never as popular for me, even amongst them, because I preferred the full white and black iconic version from GT4. And of course we have the homage to that livery here in the video, but it's a fairly obvious choice to go for the test version, as they like to call it, which visually is very similar to the black and white one but most notably as far as the bodywork goes it does of, of course have the extra winglets on the front bumper which personally I think is a, a pretty good addition it suits the car well makes it look more extreme more purposeful but it is an obvious one to go for because the white and black version was never a premium whereas the naked carbon one was so it's an easier update to make and it looks fantastic in the game now the interior looks good the exterior and also when this car outperforms all of the other cars in the pack in terms of sound well that's kind of disconcerting when it's up against again an f1 car and a rotary prototype but still that's pretty cool for ford because it does sound fantastic it sounds meaty you can hear that supercharger working and you can feel it working as well because with 590 horsepower and a lot of torque as well 533 pound feet it gets the job done in group three i would say it's probably one of the stronger options to go for and of course Balance of performance can significantly change any car, but I would still say that this one is a pretty sure bet to go for. The Ford GT is one of those cars which, in pretty much any game that you choose it, it always has this kind of otherworldly quality to its performance. And that's something which I would often attribute to, ironically, rotary engine cars. Stuff like RX-7s, RX-8s, and also some others as well. It can apply to some electric cars and even gas turbine cars. They have performance which goes beyond the spec. The Ford does that because with 550 horsepower, for instance, in road form, compared to the performance that can easily match a 620 horsepower SLR or a 605 horsepower Carrera GT, it punches above its power. Likewise, as a race car, 590 isn't earth-shattering, 
but what it can do with that spec is really impressive. Now the weight is also reasonably low for a car that's not all that small, it's getting on for 7 feet wide, so it's easily bigger than a number of the other Group 3 cars in the game, but 1165 kilos out of the crate is impressive, very impressive. The horsepower per tonne is over 500, and the pricing is of course, just like all the others, 450 grand. So it's not even like you're paying a premium for all of that ability, which means it's even better value. It's the same price, but potentially a better all-round car. And despite the fact that that is true, I would say that the reason why I like this car so much, both in a vacuum and also compared to the rest of the pack, is because it managed to exceed the expectations that fans had for it, as well as being just a good car regardless of if you were already a fan. It doesn't rely on nostalgia, it's just a good race car, and it's the complete package. It looks the part, it sounds the part, it's well priced, the handling is surprisingly smooth, very controlled, very forgiving as well actually, which is something that you can't always say for the road car, depending on how heavily you tune it. Not that it's bad handling, but at higher speeds on GT6 for instance, it could be a little bit heavy sometimes. This one doesn't feel like that. As I said, super smooth, very easy to control, and Kind of ironically, I would say that this is a pretty good entry point for newer drivers into Group 3 racing. It's that forgiving. It's really good, but it's also fast, so it's the best of both worlds. Overall, you've probably already bought it and tried it by this point, but if you haven't by any chance and you are planning to do LM race car type events or competition, I would definitely recommend giving this one a try because it is a strong all-rounder. It harkens back to the past of the franchise, but brings it up to date with a really good spec sheet and really good ability. But that's it for this pick overall, of course. I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.